I already know what you're thinking. No, digital technology is not one of the ways. In this video, I'm going to share with you or remind you of three simple, easy, probably cheap, probably free ways that you can keep your students engaged when they're working on their math, independent work, or even their homework. And I'm going to share those three ways with you right now. Think about color, think about movement, and think about presentation. When you think of elementary school, you probably first think about crayons, color pencils, school supplies in general. That's because children love working with colors and a lot of adults do as well. We kind of push it back once we get to a certain age or grade, but color is still so fun to work with. And when students are working on their math problems, it's okay to integrate their love of color with what problems they have to work on solving. So think about it. When we're giving students assignments, tasks, problems to work on, we usually always give it to them on plain white paper. That can get very boring very fast. So why not use color? That can be through using crayons, color paper, marker, pens. I know you're already thinking, but they can't erase. It's going to get messy. Math is messy and it's okay. Don't you really dislike it when students erase their work and then turn it into you because they want it to look perfect? No, I don't want you to erase your work. I have to tell kids all the time, don't erase your work. This is another great way to prevent them from erasing all of their work on their math problems. And if you don't want to go that route or add on something else involving color, use color paper or color ink. I know, I know most teachers, we don't have that color ink in our classroom and it can get very expensive. So try using an alternative by using color copy paper or color printing paper or even construction paper. You can print out their problems or their work on color paper. I know a lot of workbooks tend to have color images, but if you don't have those workbooks or if you're someone who doesn't use workbooks in your classroom, what about printing out questions, directions, tasks, or prompts on colored copy paper? That can brighten up an assignment. It can brighten up an activity and kind of bring focus or attention into what they're doing. A lot of times it can get students excited, especially if they've been working with just white paper for so long. Using all those colors, it can make it seem very exciting. Them thinking, ooh, I'm doing something different today, something special because it's on yellow paper, it's on pink paper. And another option, not printing something ahead of time, but letting them use colored copy paper, construction paper, whatever, to show their work. I once had a group of students who struggled with showing their work when solving math problems. It was a frustration for me trying to get them to consistently show their work. One day, the idea popped into my head, grabbed some color paper, and I took it a step further and gave them the choice of what color they wanted to work with. And oh, did I have buy-in. <laughs> Students were like, I want purple, I want blue, I want the green paper. And they showed their work a lot more than when they just used their notebook with white line paper or even blank white copy paper. Giving them that choice really gave them more buy-in with showing their work. Another easy, simple way to keep students engaged during their math independent work is to add in some movement. And you can do this by posting their problems or questions around the room, maybe in envelopes, or just post it on the wall. It could be small group work or something that they move around the room on their own. Now, if this is something you're doing in a classroom setting, you definitely wanna have procedures for how students are to move around the room independently, making sure that they don't disrupt any other students and that they move how you want them to move. So definitely set those procedures in place. But it's very doable if you set those expectations and are intentional with adding in movement. Even if you don't want students to move far across the room, having them move just a little can help to refocus them in on their work. So if they have a problem that they're solving, after they finish solving it, if they get up and go to a basket nearby to pull out the next problem and then return back to their seat, giving them that time to wiggle and move as they go and get that next question helps to refocus their attention. You're giving them quick, short pauses after they finish solving each problem. And in their mind, they know they have something to look forward to. Ooh, I get to move. I get to get up just a little bit after I finish solving this problem. Another option, if you don't want them to move that far, but really think about letting them move, is to allow them to have the problems on the ground or below their desk. So at least they're stretching side to side, forward or backwards under them, depending on how close or far away they are from other students. 
but that still adds in just little bits of movement here and there. And it's acceptable that they're not just sitting still in their seat working out 20 problems at a time. Give them that movement, it helps them to keep their attention on what they need to do because they're getting those short little tiny breaks in between each problem. One last way that we're gonna talk about how to easily keep your students engaged when they're working independently on their math problems is to think about presentation. In the last example, when I was mentioning movement, I talked about possibly putting problems around the room in envelopes. That's one way to present it differently to students as well, to have them go into an envelope, pull out their problem, and then work out the problem on that paper or solve it in their notebook or on their scratch paper. Another option is texture. How about crumbling up different strips of paper with questions on them so that the students can unravel it? Some of them think it's trash and they like that it might be trash. And it's kind of like, ooh, what problem am I going to get? What's gonna be in that paper? What did someone throw away? Was it a secret? I don't know. They're just a little bit more interested and they get to feel, they get to touch, they get to fidget with the paper and then solve it. And just like the previous example, they're automatically thinking about getting to do it again in the next problem. Once I finish solving this problem, I get to unravel another piece of crumpled paper and find out what the problem is going to be. I once was working with a student one-on-one. -on -one. She would get so excited when I put out my problems that were all crumpled up. I put them in a Ziploc bag. She pulled them out and was just wondering, okay, what is this question going to be? What is the problem that I'm going to solve next? And to take that step to the next level, you can take your crumbled up paper or your folded up paper, take a bunch and put it in a brown paper bag or even a gift bag make it a mystery and throw in some other objects so that they have to like move their hand around. You can do something fun like Play-Doh if you want. Throw in a stapler, throw in some erasers, throw in some cotton balls just for them to move around. Create that mystery and that excitement for them wanting to solve their problems. For more details, check out the blog post on my website, mathbell.com. And comment below with which one of the three ways you might use with your students or maybe you used to use with your students, but you have forgotten about. And until next time, here are some awesome videos that you can watch.